Starting the installation. To start the first row, press the inseam of the second plank at an angle to the inseam of the first plank and then lock them together by laying the plank down. Complete the entire first row in this manner. Use the cut piece of board from the previous row to start the next row. This starting plank section must be at least 12 inches long. If the piece is too short, start with a new board. Cut the new board in one-third, one-half, or two-thirds length sections. Depending upon what is required to maintain the random stagger pattern, always ensure that the end joints are staggered at least 12 to 16 inches from one row to the next. Place the short start board for the second row firmly against the side seam of the start board in the first row, but do not fold it down to lock it into place just yet. After you have connected three or four planks of the second row in this manner, you can now go back and lock the side seams of the first planks into position. Use a carton of planks as a weight to hold the locked planks down at the start of the rows. As you finish the rows in rooms with long spans, Continue to stay three or four planks ahead of the locked side seam position planks as you finish the rows. Use the wood wedges if necessary to help maintain the raised, unlocked plank positions. If the starting wall is uneven, the planks must be adapted to fit its contours. You can scribe the contour of the wall onto the first row of planks using a ruler and a pencil and following along the contour of the wall. Do not forget to allow for the minimum one quarter inch expansion space along the wall. You may have to disassemble the flooring due to obstructions, etc. Just lift the row of planks a few inches and tap along the joint. The release planks can then be pulled apart by sliding them out horizontally. Never bend connected planks downwards. This will damage the planks locking ridges. Now you can continue to add additional rows using the same method of assembly by working on top of your start rows and pulling the planks toward you to position them before locking them into place. Pull planks from three different cartons at each time to ensure random appearance. Use cut pieces from the end of each row as starting planks, but always stagger end joints a minimum of 12 inches and keep them random so as not to show a repeating pattern across the floor. All joints should be a tight fit with no gaps Stop and reconnect if a joint is not tight or if all edges are not even with adjacent planks. These planks can be engaged and disengaged several times if necessary to help make a correct installation.